Chair, and Construction. So the construction team responds to the GDA requirements. So I'm going to take on a very brief journey through the um, digging process for this building, which I mean, you will not believe the palpable level of excitement when this particular bid came out and um, because it actually had BIM in it. You know, our BC department was we were chasing ambulances up to this point, certainly within BAM, you know, pursuing jobs that had some kind of a BIM mandate on it. So, you know, even before the, the ITD had landed, we were aware that this was going to be there, so it was like, it was like Christmas morning within BAM when this tender arrived out, and sad and all, but it's, it's extremely true. So, you know, when it comes to bidding, you know, our ability to learn faster is probably our only real sustainable advance that we can have over our competitors. So, we're great believers in learning, being honest about where we are, and we did an enormous amount of learning throughout this project. Through the bidding, through the construction, it was a tremendous journey for us, it really was. So, this is what clients buy. They buy benefits, okay? It would be terribly foolish to think anything more than that. They look for value, they look for quality. And they're absolutely 100% right to look for that. That's what they want. And it would be highly irresponsible of the client to look for anything other than that. From, you know, construct any kind of client. You go to Tesco today, buy yourself a chicken, you're going to want to make sure that that's a quality product. If it's not, you're going to bring it back. The same kind of logic applies when you're procuring a building. That's what they look for. So, Quite simply, we believe we can improve our front end, we'd have a far easier journey when we're constructing a building. And that's our rationale for using them. It does not get much more complex than that. And at the end of the day, certainly within our FM company, we have a need for our facilities management and good data there. But for the large portion of our building where we are constructing and handing over, our benefits are quite simplistic. We want to be the guys who come home from IKEA with the right instructions and build it right first time. We don't want to come home with the wrong instructions and have to rebuild it several times and knock parts down. So you can appreciate that if that's the way you're running a business, you're going to burn through money quite rapidly. So we just want to build it right first time. That's the end. So again, our business need for BIM is quite simple. And it was nice to have a client mandating it to some degree, you know, to kind of drive that internally within BAM as well. So improve quality for, for our clients. Reduce life cycle costs, that's absolutely possible. Improved efficiencies, greater estimate certainty. That's a huge thing for us. To understand what it is we're about to buy ourselves into can be quite challenging. So most people within this room would appreciate difficulties, you know, surrounding the tendering process for a contractor. You're trying to guesstimate what the future is going to hold for you. You are trying to understand the quality of the design you're receiving. You know, in this instance it was a design and build, so we had a bit more control ourselves. But that level of certainty is extremely important to us because that can make a break in company. You know, you get a massive leader of a job, all your profit margins are gone, and God knows our margins are tight anyway. So anything we can do to introduce a career certainty around our finances is extremely important to us. So, you know, if we implement this well and strongly, we believe we're in a strong, far strong position to win tenders. <coughs> that's the way we looked at it. And if we don't win them, you know what? Whoever's won them is welcome to it because we're not winning at the price we think we're going to make money. So we're not in the business of buying jobs, absolutely not. We're in the business of getting projects at the right price, you know, so that we're, we're, in, a bit, we're in a space to deliver it within time and within our, within our budget, within our margin. So the Grimmie Hub was a bit like this for us, you know? It certainly felt like an internship. It was a real opportunity for us to road test all the stuff we've been talking about and learning about ourselves around level two delivery and around bin. And you know, we had a team of people who were, you know, very much, it was a huge amount of onboarding within BAM with the Greenway Hold. So, you know, it extended far beyond our team to our estimating department, to our planners, to our construction team eventually. So it was a really, it was a tremendous project in that sense for us. So I sincerely mean that as I stand here. And it is, if our bid manager was standing here, she would say exactly the same thing. It really was. It was one of the first times we had models up within our tender review meetings and everyone was really getting into the, into the zone, so it was, it was tremendous. So, 10 week, 10 phase. You know, does that sound like a lot to people in the room? No? It's actually quite a lot of time. It's, you know, considering the size and the scope of the building, it was a generous tender phase. You'd be amazed at some of the tender phases that people are requesting these days. So, 
understand and appreciate that when you are in a scenario where you're trying to do something which is new, something which is different, you're trying to develop models yourself, 10 weeks is not an awful lot of time to kind of run the estimate on the building and really, you know, get down and get nitty gritty with it. So, public form contract, design of a contractor scenario, suits the spine. The meet criteria was an excellent meet criteria. This is what Bauer are interested in. The way it was broken down. So, this is how the tender of the parties were going to score this particular project. And this speaks to us, this is a client who's looking for quality. This is not a client who's looking to get something built cheaply. This is a client who is allocating 50% of the marks for costs, and the rest of it is around program, quality, certainty, etc., etc., etc. So, you know, the, the point I made earlier on by Jar, you know, the billing was delivered two months ahead of schedule. That's because this criteria put us in a position where we could facilitate that. Okay? If you're a tendering team, and your meet criteria is 90% cost or 100% cost, don't expect the building to be finished on time. That's the reality of it, guys. You know? This is a very mature approach to recurring a building, I'm happy to say. So when we coupled this approach with the BIM requirements that were there, this was kind of, the scene was set for us to go and do this. This is how BAM are designed. We're, you know, we are very good at tenders that are designed like this. If it's straight up cost, it's not really our job. So from the off, this was looking good for us. We felt good about it. So there was a, a light mention of BIM, but the acronym itself was used a couple of times, certainly within the tender documentation. But there was, you know, from my point of view, there was more than I mentioning of it. Because to me, words like, you know, coordinate and quality and things like that kind of jump out of BIM to me anyway. I, I fail to see how you can ultimately achieve that without applying a process such as BIM. But you can see here some of the basic stuff, um, 3D nanosource format model included services for other equipment. So this is the type of stuff you're being asked to provide back at tender stage as well. So we got a you know we got an instructional document of sorts. We set about basically pulling the tender documentation apart to write our own EIR to suit this. And um, as we started filtering through the various different tender documents we can see, and um, you know Coordinate, 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 quality, these words are all there. Comprehensive and coordinated, coordinated and developed. These are all different things, depth of information. So these words are there. But we pick out keywords that we know are going to be important to this and um, the uh, bidding authority. So that we demonstrate that we understand what it is they're looking for when we're responding. And we're also teaming our team up to deliver the bidding the way that this team is looking for. At the end of the day, the client said, I don't really care about quality, I just want to build it very cheaply for me. That's what you would focus on. But in this instance, the client were very clear. Strong words, strong language being used there. So we honestly believe that BIM as a tool can certainly assist in delivering that. Okay. Careful that. Careful throughout the whole documentation. So part of this then, we break it all down. Alright? We document everything we see. We list it all out and we assign all this. So this is what happens when, when you're tenuring the project if you go about it. You identify key areas. You have a look at what scoring is available within those categories as well. And you're probably wondering why I'm rattling on about this. And I have actually have this method to my madness. This is a very normal and traditional way to procure a building. But when we look, and it's, it's interesting, you know, the David was mentioning earlier on about our public forms contract, etc., etc., how we're going to incorporate it. You can look at it two ways. It can be either extremely complex or extremely simple. I mean, Seth and Robert discussing yesterday, BIM is a vessel. It's a, it's a way of working. When you look at requirements of intended documentation, ultimately you could remove the phrase BIM from it entirely, and people could be applying a level two process and delivering all of these things in any event. Okay? It's the minute you really use the word level two. Level two has some <coughs> specific ways how you should go about delivering information, how you should structure your approach, how you should put together, how you should deliver it back. Right now, within the market, we're seeing a huge amount of every month level two. But then there's a whole other raft of requirements that are also listed that we want you to do this, 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 and this, and this, and that, the other. The reality is, right, there's that duplication there. I think we all need to realize that level two deliveries is much about how we deliver information, how contracts are working, you know, how people work together. It's not, it's not just about models, it's about how we coordinate information amongst ourselves. So I firmly believe that honestly, the incorporation of them within. Forms a contract could actually be extremely straightforward, genuinely. I think 
think it's already written for us how to do it. Our biggest challenge is that an awful lot of our focal keeper curve projects right now is we're trying to satisfy the contract need, the non-BIM contract aspect, of, uh, you know, the need there, and the BIM aspect, of it, which is actually duplicating everything for us. So we need to take a long hard look at this. For us, you can see some of the CGI's we have to prepare. Again, hugely assisted because we have models. Again, such a simple thing, but because we have models, we can rapidly produce CGI's. An awful lot of tenders will require you to do this, even if they're not using BIM. So there's a cost there. That cost was hugely reduced for BAM because we have models available. So you know, there's a saving there. It costs us money to do what. There's no question about that. It's, if we don't do it for free, it costs us money. We have to pay people. We have to pay external stakeholders to produce information for us. So you know, design contained the office space, research labs, and the time period. We have to demonstrate that. And um, all design completed in 3D. They were processed. That's exactly what we did. We were asked to deliver back certain aspects of the building in 3D for the tenant phase. We just went ahead and commenced our process from the off. Even not being aware that we may or may not win the building. You know, we didn't know this yet. But that's the way we were going to go about it. And our design team were tremendous. BDP, everybody, because they all put it on board and they're all for it, which is really, really great. So it was a, you know, it was a new, real adventure for everybody there. It was, it was kind of new in that regard. Some of the isometrics and exonometrics that we get out of doing this as well. Again, this stuff all enhances your tangible documentation. It's a tremendous way to say back to a client what it is you're planning to do or proposing to do. Again, all coming from the models. So to kind of produce that level of information in such a nice pictorial way would be quite challenging if you didn't have models there already. But again, that, that technology allowed us to do that. So further enhancing our tender return, providing the client with some degree of certainty as to you know, what we knew we were doing, and also demonstrating the level of competency within our design team to actually you know, work this particular way. You can see an example there of an Amsworks file. Back then, and I completely understood at the time, the design teams, the example of the design team model was available. I think things are changing now. We're seeing far more from being released now, which is great. But we developed this model ourselves from scratch within that 10-week period as well. So again, and you know, it was a design and build form contract, so that kind of made sense for the to a point anyway. So again, EDP, our concept of our design team were tremendous. They really flew into this on within a 10-week period to do something which is quite well developed to be fair. And you know, it certainly added value throughout the process for us because we understand the risk within this building hugely. We were able to take walkthroughs, have a look at this, bring in our construction managers, everybody got to have a look at where the path the nations were, how we were going to do this, how we were going to do that. So our risk was dropping by the day in terms of how we were going to go about this building. There wasn't much of a mystery to it. Now granted, it's not an enormous building, it's got a reasonably small footprint, but it definitely assisted us in terms of understanding how much risk we felt we were taking on. Some examples of the M&E produced at bid phase as well. So good coordination, identifying to us, you know, if we were going to have challenges within the risers, things big enough or they not, etc. etc. Et so the plan for working. Yeah. But thankfully the example design was excellent and it all did work really, really well. We had very minor changes to make. The only changes we made are you know, changes we decided ourselves in terms of structural approach. So we're able to assess that far better. Cross section from a lab, you can see it there. So you know cost, program, coordination, all the certainty that brought into this really, really important. These images were demonstrating our design team's ability to you know deliver this building and use, you know using this way of working. So even though you know the guys are saying it's not price, but these things do influence the team when they're assessing it. They look at this, there are these guys what they're doing. You know, that, that's kind of obvious to me, I can see they're doing this. So every little helps. And as I said earlier on, it boils down to greater cost certainty for us. So from our point of view, whether a tender is looking for BIM, not looking for BIM, BAM are going to apply this logic. If it's at all feasible, we will. If we have a three-week tender return period, it's obviously going to be extremely challenging. But as a business, we'd actually tend to move away from that type of approach anyway. We're not interested in that level of risk. So for the first time, we have used building information modeling during our tenure phase really successfully, considering it was our first time going at it. Uh, it really was beneficial. It certainly brought cost certainty, program certainty. We knew what we were getting into. You know, we had tremendous engagement from our 40, uh, from our 
boarding planners. We were just planners at that time, they don't call themselves boarding planners. Um, our estimate department, they all got involved in it. It was really, really, it was a, a real learning curve for everybody. So, you know, I, I would quite publicly say thank you to um, the GDA for, for putting even the most minor mention of them within the document makes a huge difference, and it really did. Uh, and, uh, certainly to increase the wheels and turn your throats made a huge difference. So some things that came out of the project, I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time talking about the construction phase of the project. Time's tight here, but this was the first project I'm on the took that had the new VCAR requirements on it as well, coincidentally. And you know, we spent a huge amount of time with the RKD and the science certification team developing our approach to that, which was great. So we're currently using the BIM360 field as our, our field delivery tool. And to this day, we're still using those forms in all of our live projects. So, you know, again, that was a massive benefit for us, a huge learning curve as well. So we had access to the guys like GoPal and RPD, we really went to the journey with us, and that was tremendous. And interestingly, it was the birth of our engagement with Autodesk for building office. That engagement with Autodesk commenced during the latter part of this project because we were very interested in ourselves in the asset information model side and how it was we were going to pass it back to the GDA. So we weren't quite sure. That point ourselves, what was the sorry, what was the right thing to have done? So we went to our enterprise um, enterprise vendor and started speaking to them. They put us in contact with the guys in uh, Boston, and building ops went from there. And down. So ultimately, school fund for PPP for Bam benefited massively out of what started with the Green Wave of engagement. That's where that was the trigger event, and that's you know that's a true story. So yeah, it's, it's funny how these things work. Ultimately, it's all then onto our certification and our type mark. An awful lot of the processes and documentation that we have was used on the Greenway Hub and further developed. A lot of our documentation came from there. You know, we had a, we had a great coordinator on our site, we've now moved on to Patches and Fresh, but we'll be fair enough to mention Paddy Ryan. He, he did a tremendous job on site, really driving VCAR and an awful lot of our internal information management processes. So they came forward to us for our certification, which is ultimately then onto our type mark. You know, the Greenway Hub Band was an extremely important construction project. It's a project we were absolutely delighted to be involved with. And again, thanks to the GDA for putting any small mention of them when you were on the planet. You know, we didn't need much uh, opportunity to put our foot in the door when you were in. So, you know, um, I think from certainly from the Irish construction industry's point of view, it was one of those important moments when somebody started to look for it for the first time. You know, so we're all here today, we have a Huge couple of years ahead of us all in terms of this industry. You know, things are good. BIM is becoming quite real for us now. Um, but, you know, it does seem like a lifetime ago that this started. It's not just the really finding things, it's really developing at an incredible pace. So, that's all I have for you this morning. Um, I'm going to step aside, Robert's going to step in. And